It is, I understand the desire to find the Achilles of cancer. I understand the desire coming from a family riddled by cancer, very young ages. I understand that you want to find that one switch, the one lever. So what leaked out there long ago was sugar feeds cancer. That sounds great. Makes sense. Sugar feeds cancer. Cut out sugar. Maybe you kill cancer. All right, now let's look at this objectively. First of all, if you've been around cancer enough, you have to be deferential on some level to cancer. Cancer is a badass disease, and it does a lot of damage. And it's a highly complicated disease, that if it was so simple to cut out sugar that you kill cancer, Mark Scholes would be holding a sign saying, we'll work for food out there. <laughs> it would be that simple. I would love to make it that simple, but now, let me now make it even more complicated. We have PET CT scans, right? Everybody heard about PET CT scans, and they use molecules for the cancer to suck up and gobble up because it likes to use those things. One of the most common scans that are used out there is it called an FDG PET CT. So they use a compound, maybe basically a glucose molecule, like a sugar molecule, and that's going to go into your cancer, and then your cancer lights up and we'll know where it is. Dr. Scholes, can you please tell the audience, when you use a glucose molecule to light up a PET CT scan, how worthwhile is it in prostate cancer? Well, you, yeah, you qualified it, because if you use it in lymphoma and lung cancer, it's fantastic. It's practically useless in prostate cancer. It's useless in prostate cancer. It has served no function. What has become more useful to inject, for example, a fatty acid or an amino acid that builds a protein, and then the cancer gobbles it up and says, I'm here. I love this thing. Yum, 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 yum. So now should I say, wait a second, protein feeds, protein feeds cancer, or should I say fat feeds cancer? No, well, it's again still complicated. The point being is that even through our imaging, we've learned that it's not as simple as sugar feeds cancer. So then what the hell am I supposed to do, Dr. Moy? Let me make it as simple as possible. Sugar, in my opinion, is not the issue with cancer. You can have a donut once in a while. You can live your life for God's sakes. A high blood sugar, that's a different thing altogether. A high blood sugar. Go back to your cardiovascular risk numbers. Someone that's carrying a high blood sugar, for example, say a 120, a 115, who knows for them. There's something about cancer that loves a high blood sugar, and I'll tell you why, because you pump out more insulin, and boy, these cancers just love, some of these cancers love to have insulin around, yeah. because it's a mitogen, it's a growth factor. So the end result of being heart unhealthy is that when you're heart unhealthy, the body produces all this potential food for your cancer. It's not the sugar that's feeding the cancer, it's the high blood sugar that potentially feeds cancer. Thank you. you know, the BPH drugs that Gaines talked about, did anyone know where the BPH drugs were discovered from? They were discovered from antihypertensive drugs. People took high blood pressure medication, their blood pressure came down, and they went, oh, I'm peeing better, this is great. And they said, wait, that's one of the side effects? Yes, one of the side effects of lowering your blood pressure is you pee better. So what we keep learning over and over again is all this stuff is intimately tied into something heart healthy. So. I wish it was as simple as sugar feed cancer. The second thing that I'm concerned about in prostate that I, I think really disrupts the game is a lot of adipose tissue is not a good thing for prostate cancer. I mean, prostate cancer loves it. So weight gain is enormously detrimental for some men in prostate cancer and in ways we're just learning about. So one thing that we've learned from surgeons doing radical prostatectomies, even though I know this is making you cringe, but we've learned some things, basically, is that when you look at the surgeons who have done some of the most surgeries for radical prostatectomy, and they look at the area around the prostate after they remove it, they see more and more adipose tissue around it. What does that mean? That means just when, not only when you put on adipose tissue in the belly, the rest of the body also picks up adipose tissue. The liver, the pancreas, all around, including around the prostate. So what pathologists are beginning to think right now, Epstein and some of these other guys out there and women, they're beginning to think that having all of this fat tissue around the prostate serves as a magnet. It's basically saying to the cancer, come on, come on out. Leave the prostate. We're going to secrete all these different hormones and things and cytokines and factors, and it's part of the reason we might be seeing more aggressive prostate cancer in men that gain weight. And I believe that. Well, yeah, survival 
much better in, in uh, lean people compared to overweight that, people. That's why it devastates me to see men on hormone therapy who gain a lot of weight, which I understand you put them in male menopause. But there has to be a conversation, a locker room speech before you get your first injection of Lupron or anything else, or before you take an anti-androgen pill and you go, listen, man, you know how when you're married, your wife might have gone through menopause and then she went through perimenopause, and that takes a couple of years, then there's menopause. Well, we're gonna put you through that process in about 30 days. <laughs> so you tell your wife that so that she's sensitive to what you're going to too, because sometimes men weren't very sensitive when women were going through hot flashes and menopause. They go, oh. And now men, we put them in this state in 30 days, including the weight gain. And so if you don't know what's about to happen to you, and you gain a whole lot of weight up front, it's that much harder to get rid of it because not only do we get rid of your testosterone, we get rid of your meta metabolism. So you're not metabolizing as well. So it takes a lot more to lose a pound. So if we can tell people not to gain weight or just to gain very little up front, man, that's a winner. Yeah, it's easier to not put it on in the first place. Mm -hmm.